Thank you, and I praise you for this morning, Lord God. Thank you for this opportunity, Lord God. I just ask for you to be amongst us, Lord God. Continue to be amongst us, Lord God. Continue to speak through me, Lord God, to where I'm speaking clearly, Lord God. And I just thank you, and I praise you, Lord God, for your strength, Lord God, for your confidence this morning, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Well, this morning, I wanted to talk about... Um, disciples in prayer as far as um you know who is the disciple and what are requirements of our prayer life and um so to explain disciple um it's us we're followers of christ the doer of god's word and also um believer of god's word mm -hmm. and so i actually i'm sorry i forgot my phone <laughs> The word. The word. <laughs> so I actually wanted to reference First Corinthians chapter eleven, verse one. And it reads Be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. So um that's God speaking, saying um that we're following Christ and that describes a disciple of who we are. So that means we're following Christ. We're doing what he tells us to do. How Apostle was saying this morning, being led by the Holy Spirit. And um, also, believer in his son, Jesus Christ, is referencing Acts 2, 38. And I'll read that for you. Acts 2, verse 38 reads, then Peter said unto them, unto them, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And so um, also being a disciple is that belief. So we're believing and we're being baptized in the Holy Spirit and also receiving his gift. But in order to receive his gift, we got to have faith to know that he is actually doing what he says he's gonna do. He's actually that powerful God that he says he is. And um, also a believer, um, we believe who he is and what he does. We love one another. And um, with doing that, believing what he says and what he does, with loving one another, one another, we continue to seek him to know how to love one another because there's a godly kind of love and then there's a worldly kind of love. So when we follow him, we're going to know that correct godly love on how to love on other people. And that reference comes from John, John chapter 13, verse 34 through 35. St. John 13. And it reads, a new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another, one another as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. By this shall all men know that ye are disciples, if we have love one another. So if we know, if we're conscious of us loving one another, then we know we are already walking and being a disciple and walking in Christ and following um, God's word. And um, I also wanted to mention that being a disciple is us living holy and us being holy. I you yes, you were. Um, First Peter 1 15 through 16. So that's 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 15 through 16. And it reads, But as we which have called you, sorry, but as he which have called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. Because it is written, Be ye holy, for I am holy. 
And so with that being said, I just wanted to, you know, further go into like even our conversations that we have with people that would that would show others if we're being holy. Like we can't have one conversation in church and then leave out and have another conversation with our best friends or something that's not lining up with God. That's not really um, being in a loving manner, you know, that's, you know backsliding or however you want to say it being kind of ugly we know that um that would be an example of someone not being a true disciple and they're not fully walking in holiness and um i also wanted to say that okay with that being said we no longer live how the world lives so um whenever we're being a disciple just because once before we were doing you know maybe going to the club or having a social drink and everything once we become holy we're no longer supposed to be doing that and once we become a disciple we're no longer supposed to be doing that we're supposed to be living differently as a believer and um also, my last point with being a disciple is we spread God's word. So we go around and whatever revelation we get from meditating and being in his word, our our duty, our responsibility is to go out and share it to other people as well and to let his word be spread around the world. Because if we don't do it, who would do it? And um, I wanted to reference Mark 16, 15. Um, Mark chapter 16, verse 15 reads, And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. All the world. So I just wanted to put emphasis on that. So wherever we're going, if we're traveling, if we're on vacation, if we're with friends, we're still supposed to be preaching. Um, not really preaching, but, you know, sharing the word. That's still a form of preaching. But you, um, we're speaking his word no matter where we are. It's not, oh, only when you're in church. That's when you talk about the Bible. That's when you talk about the word. No, wherever you go, no matter who you come across, you stay in his word. And um, we are not to change our talking about God once we get in a group of certain people. So just because that group of people, you may not be familiar with them, but you probably could start relating because you once used to do that keep your mouth shut. You know, you don't have to participate in that conversation when you know it's not of God and when you know you're not a part of that life no more. You're supposed to be changed. Um, a, a scripture that just came to my mind that I didn't write down was be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So that means when we're in his word, that's renewing our mind to where we are now going to be speaking his word whenever we're around other people. And my next point was the the point about prayer. So what is prayer exactly? Um, it would be praise and worship. I wanna give you the points first, just in case I can't go all the way through. So the points of prayer would be praise and worship, confession, declares and decrees. So with praise and worship, I reference Psalms, Psalms 9, one through three, and I will read that. Psalms chapter 9, verses 1 through 3. I will praise ye, O Lord, with my whole heart. I will show forth all my marvelous works. I will be glad and rejoice in thee. I will sing praise to thy name, O thy most high. O thou most high. When my enemies are turned back, they shall fall and perish at thy presence. Sorry, I wasn't supposed to read that. It was actually 9, 1 through 2. But then also Psalms 18, 2 through 3. Psalms 18. And it reads, The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength, in whom I will trust, my buckler and my horn of my salvation in my high tower. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised, so shall I be saved from my enemies. And um, 
I wanted to, you know, emphasize on the praise and worship or explain further what the praise and worship is being thankful. And um, we declare that the good news of God. So with those scriptures that I've read so far, it's we're giving him praise for what he has done for us, for who he is. And um, also I wanted to reference Psalms 28 verse 2. Psalms 28, verse 2. Hear the voice of my supplications when I cry unto thee, when I lift up my hands towards thy holy oracle. So praise and worship is also a body language. So we, um, when we look to God, when we raise our hands, that's also allowing us to receive him to be a part of us and to um, just acknowledge him and just Re surrender it all to him like it's also part of our body language also um with that same chapter chapter 28 wanted to go to verse 6 through 7 blessed be the lord because he hath heard the voice of my supplications the lord is my strength and my shield my heart trusted in him and i am helped therefore my heart greatly rejoices and with my song will I praise him so that goes into more examples of him praising him but when we praise him he's also glad that's what he wants us to do to praise and worship him that that allows him to understand that we know who we are serving that we know that we're giving him the glory and the honor and not anything else like how apostle mentioned um not worshiping gifts or not worshiping people we know exactly who we're worshiping and that's god and we do that in our form of praise and worship and um I also wanted to mention as part of prayer, you know, anybody could pray, but specifically I'm re referencing prayer for a disciple, a believer, a God, a follower of Christ. And that is actually different from any other person, any other religion praying because of the fact that they don't know who they're praying to. We know who we praying to, who we are praying to, and we know where we are praying towards the heaven. He is in heaven and he is, um yes yes and we also know his ability so some um some religions they believe you know that god takes and gives their god the little g <laughs> takes and gives but we know our god only gives life and life more abundantly and so we know that our god isn't going to be wavering and be like well you know i want you to suffer and then I want you to be good. I mean, things happen, yes. But we're not saying that we're sacrificing things to a God to potentially get evil things happening to us. Some religions believe that. And I just wanted to clarify that we know our God doesn't do that. Our God loves us and our God um, takes um, joy in us flourishing. And um, with that being said, I wanted to reference Isaiah 29, 13. And it reads, no, that's not right. I'm sorry. Isaiah chapter 29, verse 13 reads, Wherefore the Lord said, For as much as this people draw near me with their mouth and with their lips, do honor me, but have removed their heart, far from me and and their fear towards me is taught by the percept of men yes honestly i don't know where i was going with that <laughs> forgive me but um my last point with that was the honoring god and showing respect so there we go. That's what I was going with that. So um, we, let me read it again. Wherefore the Lord said, for as much as the people draw near me with their mouth and with their lips do honor me, but have removed their heart far from me and their fear towards me taught by the percept of men so also with prayer we're giving him glory and honor for who he is with our words what we say and um i just wanted to 
get to the last part um, because I referenced with what we say. So prayer is also a confession. So with that, it's saying the same thing as what God says and not what he or she says or what they say. So, you know, the old traditions or anything like that, if it's not in the word, we don't say it. And that's also a form of prayer because prayer is just words that are coming out of our mouths. And so that confession is... Um, Reference in Joshua 1 8, and I'll read that as I wrap up for you all. Joshua chapter 1, verse 8 reads This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but by but thou shalt meditate there in day and night, and thou mayest observe to do accordingly to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. So with that being said, our prayer life with the confession um, is what we say. And when we do that, that's what we will receive. So whenever we... Um, whenever we say what our what the word is saying we're doing that whenever we're meditating in his word day and night when we meditate in his word day and night then we know what to be saying and when we say the correct things we are prosperous in life so i just wanted to mention that for this morning as far as being a disciple in our prayer life